So we got the ridge board set and then we braced it off. But today, before we can start putting the rafters on, we still gotta get that ridge board up a little bit higher and get it nice and level. And then we can start putting our rafters on. Nothing fell. The best thing to do is we're going to have to go, go all the way out and then back in, except trying to yeah. get around all this bracing. Yeah, you're good. So again, our roof pitch that we're working with here is 6 and 12, 6 inches rise for 12 inches run. So to lay out our rafter, it's going to go at that, at that pitch, that angle, and we need to make a plumb cut at the top, plumb being the ridge board is going to be plumb, so the rafter is going to sit up against it like so, right? So to make that plumb cut, it's pretty easy with a framing square. We use the kind of the fat side of the framing square as the run and the skinnier side as the rise. Okay, I'm just gonna flip this this way, not bad. <clears throat> we have six inches of, uh, of rise here on the edge of the, of the board. And then we go over here on the top side of the run and we go 12. So you're just touching the edge of the, of your, uh, in this case, two by six with your six and 12 right there. And then I just kind of pull it over towards the corner here because I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna cut this off for the plumb cut. And I just wanna go kind of to the edge of the board here. So I'm not cutting off more than I have to. And then just strike a line. That's gonna be our plumb cut. That, this will, this will go up against the ridge, the ridge board. Now we'll go to the other end. We're going to have to measure. We've done the math on this. It's basically Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Uh, or they make calculators that professional uh, carpenters tend to use where they just punch it in and it tells them. Or you can use an online site. Learnframing.com. It just gives you a little, you, little calculator online. You plug in your measurements that it asks for and it'll spit it out for you or if you just like to use trigonometry you can use Pythagorean theorem and get the same thing we're just going to measure from the top of our plumb cut and go what we say 811 on in our case mm -hmm. so eight foot 11 right up here at the top of the board i'm just going to 
mark that. And that'll tell us at the bottom of the rafter, it's gonna be the plumb cut for the outside edge of the wall. We're gonna flip around on this side. Opposite, the opposite side of where we, we drew our ridge cut there. We're gonna do the same thing, the six and 12 here. And then we'll match up, we'll slide it down here and match up our top corner with the mark we just made. Strike that line. Now, we're not gonna cut all that off in this case because this is our overhang. It's gonna overhang past the wall, but this just gives us a plumb mark. Now, next thing we wanna do is the bird's mouth cut that's gonna sit on, this is where it's actually gonna sit on top of the wall. This is the outside edge of the wall, basically. Um, plumb with the wall when the rafter is tilted up. So we do the same thing, just go, you just take your six and 12, run it down sideways until I line up the eight on this plumb cut. Y8, and I, of course I still have the six and the 12 on the board here. I'm going for a four inch seat cut in that bird's mouth cut. So in other words, the area that's gonna be able to sit on top of the wall, I want a four inch cut. So, so when I have 12 on the edge here, four inches away is eight. That's why I'm going to eight. And I'm just marking, like I said, just marking it or lining it up with the, that outside wall plumb cut and then just strike that line. Now, this is what's gonna sit on top of the wall. And this is the plumb going outside the wall. And then this is your overhang. So if you have however much overhang you want, you go out past here. In this case, I'm not gonna cut this right now, but let's say you wanted a nine inch overhang. Well, there's, you just mark a line your nine up here, your six and your 12, and then you strike this line. That will give you nine inches out on your overhang. That's all you'd have to do. And then you could, you could cut that off. Now, if you get back here in the yard and look up, just make this sure looks, these look yeah. like mm -hmm. they're straight with each other. Well, I can't tell from here. I you couldn't know. tell it just one up. You know, say, you know, in other words, is the ridge board ending where it's supposed to, or right. are these going out or in? I think we'll go ahead and move our scaffold over, get set up for this guy. This is why we did a four inch cut on the bird's mouth where it sits, the rafter sitting flat on, uh, oh shit, I always stumble over this. Frickin header board? Yeah, the header board, I don't know why. So it's not just sitting on the header board in this case. Uh, every other rafter actually sits on top of the post. So the four inch cut extends beyond just the header board over onto the post, which is what I really want. Uh, so that the weight of the roof is being supported by the, the post itself uh, sitting on top of the post and then you don't want to do too much more than that because uh, by code you can't go cut beyond a third of the height of, of the rafter 
It's just because of structural integrity. Yeah, I mean, if you if you go cutting too much into it, then then it's not going to support the load, and you could actually break the rafter with too much load. <laughs> Go ahead and cut that. I'll stay up here. Y'all get right on it. You better get ready to go buy one. Go what? <laughs> to go buy a new one. <laughs> a new saw or a new thumb? I'm saying if I cut it, you might as well just go ahead and get in the car and go get a new one. Oh, the board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a zero probability I could cut that board right. <laughs> All right, shove against the little bit, see if it moves any. Just have it. Snug as you can, man. Alright. 